Welcome to Revise for Physics, the place where you revise for physics. In this video I'm going to show you one way that you could use to calculate the wavelength of light from the diffraction grating uh, with a laser. Now you're finding the wavelength of the laser. The laser works because it has one frequency, um, so we call it monochromatic. So it's just got this single frequency of light. Now the diffraction grating will give us a slightly different type of pattern to the double slit and because the slit separation is so much smaller we get very very different angles so we can no longer use a small angle approximation so the equation that defines it is a little bit different. I'm going to start off by looking at the diffraction grating. The diffraction grating is typically somewhere around a hundred lines per millimeter. Um, now it might be a thousand lines per millimeter, it might be 50 lines per millimeter, but I'm using a hundred because that's quite common and it's quite uh, an easy set of numbers to use as well for demonstration purposes. So a hundred lines per millimeter is a hundred thousand per meter um, and that then will give you a slit separation of one hundred thousandth uh, of meter. Okay, so a hundred lines per millimeter means that there's one hundredth of a millimeter between each line. Now that when you write it in standard form is just going to give you uh, one times ten to the minus five meters for your value for D. Now typically if you were doing this over between a diffraction grating and a wall that was about three meters away then you would have some numbers like this. Now we've got the central bright spot so the diffraction grating will cause the central bright spot here uh, and then we've got our first um, our first peak or our first bright spot um, so I've called everything on this side A and everything on this side B so the distance from the first this side to the first this side should be equal but due to uh, if you if you don't get this at perfectly at, at uh, right angles to the wall then you might get a little bit of a difference or there might be some error in your measurement and from n is equal to 2 to n is equal to 0 should be the same as n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 2 on the other side so the equation that defines where the bright fringes will appear, these bright fringes here and here, is n lambda is equal to d sine theta. So we're going to start off by finding the angle, and that angle is the angle over on this side, okay, this angle here, um, and that's the angle relative to the central line if you were to make a right angle triangle. So I'm not going to explain where the formula comes from. I'm, I'm going to explain what you can do with the formula. So for n is equal to 1 I have two measurements okay this separation 1 and this separation 2 okay so separation 1 and separation 2 but they're both at n is equal to 1. They're both my first order maxima, my first order uh, bright spots. Then I've got my second order down here. My second order ones are, I've got A and I've got B right here and here. So these are some fictional results but they are quite typical of what you would get. I try to be quite close to sensible. Uh, now then, what we have here is uh, some dreadful writing. I'm getting quite a lot of lag on this pen this morning, so it's not coming out very clear. But uh, what I've got is the average of S1 and S2. So I add those together, and I take an average. Like I said, I've got very typical values, but they are made up. But the maths, the maths is real. Okay, so the average of these two numbers here gives me this number here. The average of these two numbers gives me this number. Now because I'm going to use tan uh, of opposite over adjacent to find the angle that the 
um, fringes I'm making with the diffraction grating. I'm having to divide my opposite by my adjacent within the triangle, so that's S divided by D. So S, in this case, is the separation between the central peak and one of the bright spots. So this here is uh, S2, for example, okay, um, and the, the second one, okay, so this is uh, S2, uh, and maybe this is S1, okay, for the second order, so that would correspond to these two here. Now, if I do S over D, my D, uh, and I've just spotted a mistake in my uh, in my table. My D is the capital D, okay, which is the distance from the screen to the grating. So capital D, so that's three meters. So 0 0.2 divided by three gives you 0 0.067 and 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.3 gives you 0 0.13. So uh, now I've got S over D. I can find my angle, theta, using tan to the minus 1 of S over D. And this gives me the angle which I'm then going to use to find sine theta. So that's just putting this number through tan to the minus 1. And then I can take sine of that angle and calculate sine theta. So I'm getting closer to what I want with the formula. I have d sine theta as my next step. So that's taking this value and then dividing by little d, which is the slit separation on the diffraction grating. Now I earlier on calculated that my slit separation was 1 times 10 to the minus 5, okay, because of my slit separation being 100 lines per millimeter. So I've now got d sine theta, and to find lambda, I just have the formula n lambda is d sine theta, so I divide d sine theta by n to give me lambda. So I'm dividing by n, and n is the order of the fringe. So the first order and the second order. Dividing by 1 shouldn't give you many surprises. Dividing by 2 for the second order, these second order bright spots that appear over here. So I've got two values now for the wavelength of light. Okay, so what I could do then, uh, they should be the same. They're not, that's just experimental problems. Uh, I add them together and divide by two to calculate the mean. Obviously if I had five readings or six readings, then I can add them all together and get a mean for all of the results. But in this case I get 6.52 times 10 to the minus seven for my mean result. Remember, this is a slightly made up value. Um, my range then is going to give me some estimate for my uncertainty in the result. So I'm going to use half range as my uncertainty because in theory half range would take me to above or below my original. So I subtract the two numbers from each other and I get 0 0.15 times 10 to the minus 7. So half of that range, to give me my plus or minus value, is 0 0.075. Now I'm going to round that to 0 0.08 because that is the smallest number of my actual calculated mean. So that's saying that my value could go up to 6.7 or it could go down to 6.44. Okay, So that's 6.52 uh, plus or minus 0 0.08 times 10 to the 7 meters. Or, uh, if you want to put it in the slightly more scientific form, we might have, or scientific, hmm, more common form, 652 nanometers, which is about the wavelength of red light. So looking at all of that there, it is a lot of working. Um, you might want to lay it out differently, but that is it in a nutshell. So hopefully this has helped if you're struggling to calculate the wavelength of light from a diffraction grating.
like I said, this is just one example of how you could do that. Okay, I hope the video's helped. If it hasn't, uh, maybe go back and watch parts of it again if you've gotten stuck on a part. Um, or uh, if you want to see where the derivation comes from, the derivation is very similar to the double slit derivation. Thank you for watching.